You're live here with Jeremiah Shavery, a.k.a. J. Shave, and I'm reporting live here from the wonderful Lake Elma State Park. As you can tell, it is snow-covered, and the reason we are here today is because of the Arctic blast we have been having today. Well, actually, we've been having all week this Arctic blast, and we, to come with it, we have had snow, and the lake is actually frozen over. If you look here to... Uh, my left, there is actually a guy out on the lake fishing. He's out Travis ice Jarvis. fishing. Travis Jarvis, and uh, he's out here fishing on the lake. Can you can you get a look at this here? He's fishing here. Um, how how you been doing today? What have you uh, caught? Uh, I caught a cut a nice rainbow trout. Look at Still that. Alive. Still alive there. Cut a decent perch. He's caught a perch. And a nice bluegill. And he's caught a bluegill. <coughs> now he's he's doing fairly well out, th out here. He's got his uh, holes in the ice. As you can tell here, look, this is how thick the ice is. Okay, well, um, we went on a very wild adventure today. We crossed Lake Alma today. Today is January... What's the date, Moose? You know, January... 19th. On January 19th, it's Martin Luther King Day, and we crossed Lake Alma. It was crazy. Okay. Good evening. We're live here in Wilson, Ohio, and as you can tell, it's a winter wonderland out here. They have got, according to the radio, they have got three to six inches of snow. I measured, and it looks like if you look here, you can look and see we got about three inches here, according to my ruler. We got three inches of snow, and maybe a half an inch of ice on top of that. But what I'm out here in Wilson for, we're um, actually at a local resident's house. And who says you need a hill to go sleigh riding? I'm live here in Wilson, Ohio, and this is day two of the Arctic Blast. As you can tell, as there has been a lot of snowfall, up to three to four inches of snow, plus ice on top of that. As you can tell, the ice is taking a real big toll here on Wilson, Ohio. If you can see this tree in the background, the ice is built up on it. There's a lot of ice on it, as you can tell. Look at that, it's ice build up on it here. As you can tell, there's many trees covered in ice. And if I'm you live here in Wilson, Ohio, again, I'm still here, folks. I'm still here. I'm still live in Wilson, Ohio. And the snow and ice storm that has um, been going on for the past few days has crippled southeastern Ohio. As you can tell, if you can get this in my background, power lines are down and trees are down and the electric companies are doing all that they can to try to get the power back on for these folks. Right now in Ohio, there is afternoon. I'm reporting at Wellston High School in Wellston, Ohio, and the kids here, the students, were just dismissed two hours early due to the high winds that we have been having in southeastern Ohio. The winds are ranging anywhere from 25 to 45 miles per hour, and with gusts up to 60 miles per hour. Now you're probably wondering why the schools are releasing two hours early. Now this is not only the high school, but the middle and intermediate and the Bundy also are released two hours early. And the reason why they are being released two hours early is because the buildings... And we are reporting here in Wilson, Ohio, for all you girls out there that are on the search for the ultimate prom dress. Look no farther, because we have found it. We have found the prom expo at the updraft. We're going to go down, we're going to talk to the co-owners the co -owners of the updraft, and find out what led to this event, and how they're doing with this event. So come on, let's go. Hi, you're here with Jay Shave, and I'm reporting at Updraft Ministries. And the reason we are here today is because they are having a prom expo. And if you can get this in my background here, they have many prom dresses. And we are here and we're going to, I'm going to interview. Good evening. I'm reporter Jay Shave and I'm starting a new series entitled Jay Shave's Storm Journeys. And I'm going to start it this month. Actually, I'm going to start it right now. So I'll be watching each month for an exciting new segment. I've decided to start this journey right here at home, right here in Wellston, Ohio. I'm going to tell about the history behind Wilson, Ohio, and tell some, of the, some about the founder of Wilson. If you can look behind me, this is the statue of Harvey Wells, if you can get a zoom in on this here. If you can zoom in, can you see the statue of Harvey Wells? 
You got that there? Okay. Now, this is the founder of Wilson. He's the one who is credited with the founding of Wilson. And now we're going to go up to the old Harvey Wells homestead. So let's go. I'm here at the founding father's homestead. I'm here at Harvey Wells' house. Now, Harvey Wells, according to this newspaper article, Harvey Wells was born May 29, 1846, in Wilkesville, in Benton County. Now, Benton County is the county that borders Jackson County. Now, Harvey Wells, it is said here that a businessman, a Jackson businessman, regarded Harvey Wells' scheme to make a new town as crazy. And it says here that he refused to render him any assistance in his plan, which would have likely made Jackson the iron center for Southern Ohio. So, Wells decided to strike out for himself, and he created a new town in the heart of the county, which, with not without standing, the completion of the county seat in smaller villages grew until it had the population of more than 10,000 people. Now, Wilson was founded in 1873 is when Wilson was founded. Now, back to Harvey Wells. Harvey Wells, during the summer during the summer and early fall of 1896, Wells was confined to his home under the care of a physician and a nurse. Sometime during Monday night, October 19, 1896, Wells jumped through the window of his second-story bedroom and fell 18 feet to the ground, breaking both legs and fracturing one arm. And in addition to these injuries, he also had internal injuries. He died October 22nd, 1896. Now if you can get a shot behind me here, now that he fell 18 feet, if you can get a shot at this second story window, I do believe it was the one here at the front that had boarded up here. Now he fell 18 feet from this window and he broke two legs and one arm and also suffered internal injuries. Now this this just amazes me that he died. It was three days three days later that he died from these internal injuries. Now we're going to take a walk up here and uh, take a look at the house here now. So if you can follow me on up, we're going to take a look at this. It says here that the Harvey Wells homestead was built back in 1883 is when it was built. Now, if you can see this back here, they have been, you can take a look at it, take a look all over here. They have uh, actually been doing renovation to the home. According, I found this in the newspaper, the Wilson Telegram, it says a group of volunteers and students from Hawking College are, have been working for three seasons here on the Harvey Wells home site. It says their ultimate goal of this project is to eventually renovate the entire home into a museum slash community building. And it says the building could possibly serve as a place for historical society meetings, rotary meetings, and also a place to visit and learn about Wilson's founder in the city's past. Now if you can come back and take a look at the sign here that they have put up on the side of the Harvey Wells home. It says, the Harvey Wells House, founder of Wilson. Built in 1883, the Harvey Wells House was home to the founder of Wilson, Ohio. This house is significantly a part of the history of the town. It is important to the physical fabric of the town due to its prominent location, and it is also a unique example of the fine Victorian architecture. Harvey Wells was born in 1846 near Wilkesville, Benton County, Ohio. He served our nation in the Army during the Civil War. Wells wrote a book on rapid calculation that sold some 60,000 copies. He was a member of the Ohio Constitutional Convention. In 1874, Wells founded the city of Wilson on land that he purchased from his father-in-law, U.S. Congressman H.S. Bundy. Wells lived in this house from its construction in 1883 until his death in 1896. Now this was put up by the 
students at the Hawking College, they had put this up and they've been renovating this house and their main goal is to turn it into a museum for this lovely town. Now this is my first um, part of my historic journey that I have started entitled J. Shaves Historic Journeys. So stay tuned each month for an exciting new segment. And I'm reporter J. Shave and I'm starting my second segment in my series entitled J. Shave's Historic Journeys. Now my journey has led me to Pomeroy, Ohio. Now Pomeroy, Ohio is located in Meigs County, right here on the river, Ohio River, for that fact. Now Pomeroy was the town was named after a fellow named Samuel Pomeroy. Now Samuel Pomeroy was an early resident to the community. Now, Pomeroy was founded back in on April 1st, 1819. Now, the population of Pomeroy grew quickly in the 1800s because of the different coal mines located in the area. But that's a little history behind Pomeroy. Now, the real reason I'm here today is because of the old Pomeroy Mason Bridge and the new Pomeroy Mason Bridge. That is the reason why I'm here today. The old Pomeroy Mason Bridge was built back in 1928. Now the old Pomeroy Mason Bridge is now being dismantled. You really can't see it in the background because it's dark outside, but it is being dismantled and weather permitting, the date of the demolition, demolition will be Wednesday between 8 and 9 a.m. in the morning. If the weather is clear, and the condition of Porter J. Shave, and I am in Clifton, Ohio, at the historic Clifton Mill. Now, the historic Clifton Mill is one of the largest water power gist mills still in existence today. Now, mining is a, was, and well, still is today, an important part of the history of Clifton and the surrounding areas. Now, in the early 1800s, water power was essential and the thundering waters of the Little Miami River in the Clifton Gorge attract, attracted many entrepreneurs to the area, which started many mills. Now, along the Clifton Gorge, there was 70 mills in existence, and now the only one that's still on the Clifton Mill is the historic Clifton Mill. Now, if you can go ahead, we're going to walk over and take a look at the mill. And I'll tell you a little bit about what it is now. If you can go on ahead, we'll take a look here. Now today, the Clifton Mill is still in existence. And inside the Clifton Mill is the Mill Race Restaurant. And they serve a homemade breakfast and lunch every day. They serve it every day, all day, and the, menus in, and the menu includes their famous fluffed pancakes, french toast, biscuits, and sausage and gravy, bacon, eggs, sausage, ham, omelet, fried potatoes, and old-fashioned corn mush. Now the price range on this ranges anywhere from $3.99 to $8.99. Now at lunchtime, they have, at lunch, the hearty sandwich such as the chicken salad, the Reuben, the grilled cheese, the turkey club, the BLT, and the chicken wrap. And they also have a variety of salads and fresh homemade soups. Now their prices range from $3.99 to $8.50. Now they combined their own country recipes with natural fresh ingredients to prepare their scrumptious desserts, which include cherry, apple, chocolate, pecan, and chocolate pecan pies. And they also have cookies. And now their cookies, they say, remind, can remind you of grandma's recipe. So now we're gonna take a walk around here and we're gonna get a look at the mill in action. Now the mill was built back in 1802 is when the mill was built. Now we're walking around here. Now the hours of operation of the restaurant is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now they also have a gift shop inside the Clifton Mill and the gift shop is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
Now they are closed on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And New Year's they are closed. Now the Clifton Mill is the the Clifton Mill is the perfect place for your next special event. They have it's a very historic mill, and they have a lot of they have a lot of different things that go on throughout the year. Now one of their most famous attractions here at the mill is during Christmas time in December they have a legendary Christmas light show which takes place in December and runs into the early days of January. Now as you can tell behind me here, if you can just zoom in, this is the mill in action. That is the uh, mill here. So you can see that it is spinning and as you can tell it is still running today. And it is still going strong, as you can tell. Very reliable. As you tell, it is very reliable and it is still running today. But this is my. By the way, I forgot to say. I forgot to say. I'm in Clifton, Ohio. This is my third segment in my historic journey called J.A. Shades Historic Journeys and I'm at the Clifton Mill. I chose the Clifton Mill because I thought their legendary Christmas light show was pretty neat. I've watched, uh, seen pictures of the lights. They use 3.5 million but we will be back here in December for the legendary Christmas light show. So that is all I have folks and please check out my other videos on YouTube. Thank you. US. That's the Oak Hill website. Now you can get on there and they have two different links. The one link is for WSAZ and it shows all the highlights of the game. And the other link takes you to a website that to where you can watch the full game. Okay? Now this is very important for these guys. They have won this and um, get on there. And I'm reporter Jay Shave and I'm reporting live here at Lake Alma State Park. Now, as many of you have probably remember, we were back here in December where we had crossed Lake Elma when it was frozen. Now, it's April now, and we're back here at Lake Elma for a totally different reason. And the reason we are out here is because of the purple box. And as many of you have probably wondered, what is the purple box? Well, you probably drove down here in southeastern Ohio where on the highways where you probably noticed these little purple boxes. Now these purple boxes are insect traps, and they're not bird boxes as many of you probably think they are, but they are insect traps. And these purple insect traps are designed to catch a certain insect, and the insect is called the emerald ash borer. Now the emerald ash borer is native to Asia, and it was first found back in 2002 in Michigan. And since then, the bug has spread to Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Indiana, Maryland, and also Wisconsin. And since then, they have tried to put these boxes up to find out if the bug is in the area or not. So now we're going to go and I'm going to show you one of these purple boxes and we're going to make our way to the other side of the lake where one of the purple boxes are. And now we're going to go over and take a look. So come on, let's go. Because if we lost our ash trees, which is a very important resource for us, it could be very devastating. Now that is all I'm going to report on. This is, I'm reporting live at Lake Alma State Park. And this has been my journey on the Purple Box. So please, good morning. I'm reporter Jay Shave and I'm reporting live here in Pomeroy, Ohio. Now it's just past 845 and we're here for one thing and one thing only. We're here for the destruction of the old Pomeroy Mason Bridge. Now the old Pomeroy Mason Bridge has cheated death three times now and this is the fourth time that ODOT has rescheduled the destruction of the bridge. Now the other three times it has been delayed because either weather or the river was up too high. Now we're here for the destruction. Now it's going to take 19 C4 charges to take the bridge down for 
take the bridge down. Now that's from pier to pier, 19 C4 charges. Now, once the, they're gonna sound three different sirens. Now the one has already passed, which was five minutes till, and they had just sounded the one for three minutes till, and then there will be one more, a minute till. And then they'll sound one final one after the bri historic bridge is dropped into the Ohio River. Now, good morning folks, I'm reporter Jay Shave, and I'm reporting live here at the University of Rio Grande in Rio Grande, Ohio. Now, the University of Rio Grande has just experienced an earthquake. That's right folks, you heard me right, an earthquake right here in southeastern Ohio. Now, I was, actually, I'm a student here at the University of Rio Grande. Good evening, I'm reporter Jay Shave, and I'm in Oak Hill, Ohio, just outside Oak Hill, Ohio, actually, and we are here for the Festival of Flags. Now, the Festival of Flags takes place each May, Memorial Day weekend, and we're here, and we're going to check out the festivities, and we're going to go downtown, and we're going to check out what kind of things the town has done to try to get ready for this year's festival. Now, tonight's entertainment is Dwight Eisenhower, and he he is a Elvis impersonator, and we're going to get some footage of him later tonight. So now we're going to go downtown, and we're going to check out the festival. Okay, folks, now we are in downtown Oak Hill. Folks, I'm reporter Jay Shave. I know it's been a while, but I've got you guys a new report. I'm reporting in Hamden, Ohio at the Hamden United Methodist Church. And I'm going to ask you guys a question. Does the economy have you down, down, down? Because if the economy has got you down, then there's only one solution to the economy being down, and that is a full belly. And that's right, folks. If you come on down to the Hamden, Hamden United Methodist Church, they were having a free soup and sandwich dinner. Now, like my mom always said, if it's free, you take two. Or, you know, in this case, take as much until your belly is full. But we're here, and it's every Thursday, 5.30 to 7. And we're going to go in, and we're going to interview Pastor Rodney. He's the pastor here at the Hamden United Methodist Church. And we're going to find out the details on this free soup and sandwich dinner that they're having here in Hamden. So come on, let's go on in. Okay, I'm reporter Jay Shave, and I'm in Wilson, Ohio, in front of the Sylvester Memorial Wilson Public Library. That's right, folks. I'm in Wilson again. I'm always in Wilson. But as many of you may have heard, the reason I'm at the library is because the libraries across Ohio have been in trouble. That's right, folks, in trouble. Governor Ted Strickland has proposed a budget cut of $227.3 million in state funding, which means a 30% cut for a lot. Ohio Public Libraries. So this reports just a thank you report to all the library patrons in Ohio. I'd like to thank you guys because of you guys, you've made the library's voice heard. You made it loud and proud. You've made the voice heard, and they have asked us to um, pace back on what we have been doing to make our voice heard. So what they have asked us to do is take the libraries to take down their flyers, to take down their signs, because they're going to have a discussion of the amendments for the budget bill this weekend, and they're going to vote on it on Monday. So hopefully that will change the library's cuts, but we'll wait and see. But I'd like to thank all the library patrons in Ohio, especially a special thanks to the library pat patrons in Wellston, Ohio. I'd like to thank all you guys out there, because if it wasn't for you guys, you know, it's hard to tell what could have happened. But I so I'd like to thank all of our representatives for all that they have done, and that's all I have, guys. So thank you, and check out my other videos. I'm reporter Jay Shays, and I'm doing a follow-up story on a story I had done back in February, where the students at the Wilson City Schools 
got out two hours early due to high winds because the school, when it was built back in 2002, it did not have the reinforcing steel in the walls. So we're here at the Wilson City Schools, as you can tell by the sign here behind me, and they have started the construction on the high school and middle school, putting the reinforcing steel into the buildings. So we're going to go up and we're going to take a look at what they are working on. Okay guys, I'm reporter Jay Shave and I'm at the Wilson High School. And as you can tell behind me, they have ripped the bricks off of the school and they are installing the reinforcing steel into the building. Now, if you can see behind me, I'm at Wilson High School, and you can see the construction workers hard at work trying to get the building prepared for the next school year. Now, also, the middle school is under construction, too, but we're not going to go up and take a look at it. We'll just see all the construction that it's doing at the high school. And also, if anybody watches this, we'll see that here where they have all the bricks where they have four off of the school so they could get to the brick to put in the reinforcing steel. And also, if anybody watches this, the Golden Rocket Drive is closed. You can only get in one way, and that is off of, uh, what is that, 93 there, or 327. Off 327, that's the only way you can get to the schools, and if you're coming off of Grady Lane, it is closed, so do not come that way. So if you get one more shot of the construction workers hard at work, we will go. Hopefully they get this done before August and the next school year runs around. Thank you, and that's all I need. I'm reporter Jay Shave, and I'm in Wellston, Ohio, and it's that time of season again where you can taste in the air the Jackson County Bills cooking. You can hear the kids screaming. And you can smell the livestock a-stirring. That's right, folks. I'm talking about the Jackson County Fair. And this week, the Jackson County Fair is going on. And it is a seven-day event. And today is Tuesday. Yesterday was the opening day of the Jackson County Fair. And today is Tuesday. And tonight's big event is the Demolition Derby. Now, I'm going to come back later this evening to get footage of the Demolition Derby for you guys so you can see some of the action. And... We're going to come back and we're going to get footage of this for you guys. Now, we're, if you can see behind me here, the sign says County Fair in progress. And the fairgrounds is right out this way. And we're going to go out to the gate and we're going to get footage of the fairgrounds. So come on, let's go. Okay, folks, now I'm outside the Jackson County Fairgrounds. And tonight is Demolition Derby Night. Tonight is Tuesday. There's still four nights left at the Jackson County Fair. Tomorrow's night will be go-kart races, and the following night will be motocross, and the night following that will be speed pits. And then the following night, for the last night, that Saturday, there will be the final demolition derby at the grandstands. So I'm going to get some footage tonight of what the uh, demolition derby is going to look like, and you can animals, depending on what they are selling for. But this is the main arena where all the 4-H members come and they test their skills. And that's all I got now, folks. So, well, I'll take that back. There's one little surprise I'm going to show you, folks, before we leave the 4-H grounds and go up for the main event, the Demolition Derby. I'm going to take you over to show you this surprise. Okay, folks, the little surprise I have for you guys is there's one last thing I failed to mention, and that is the horses here at the 4-H exhibit here in this section. The 4-H members who have horses don't show the order J shade and joining me now is Democratic candidate Luke Scott who is running for Wilson City Council Ward 2. Thank you for joining me tonight Luke. You're welcome. Thank you. So I want to ask you a few questions about your political campaign. My first question is how did you get into politics? Well, I got into politics because with, with campaigns and, and I've seen what people can do on a campaign. A campaign can can just inspire people and gives people so many opportunities. Um, and, and with campaigning, I, I build friendships that will last a lifetime. Uh, I've been selected to be county captains 
for like Hillary Clinton for president and uh, Jennifer Bruner for United States Senate and uh, uh, Ohio Secretary of State Jennifer Bruner. She she's a hello. Very I'm reporter Jay Shay, and I'm at the uh, Coco, or if you want to call it the Coal Festival, whichever you want to call it. And I'm showing you the festivities that they have down here at the 2009 Hillco. And they have very different festivities. You can get a shot of a little bit of different stuff here to my sides if you don't care. And there's all kinds of people out for the Hillco this year. As you can tell, it's really booming. As you can tell, there's many different vendors here from side to side. You have Hawaiian ice, you have the kettle corn, you got the waffle uh, cakes, the... Uh, elephant ears, you got fries, you got deep fried veggies, you got all that. But uh, we're here at the Hilco. Mauricio Gonzalez, 27, New York. Okay, you guys, you've just seen the footage of the Briar Green students participating in the reading of the names that were the names of the people who lost their lives in 9-11. So that's all I got for now, folks. So back to you guys. in a winter wonderland and that's what I'm saying this morning folks good morning this is the 19th of December and as you can tell the weather was actually right for once and we were under a winter wonder well not winter wonder I guess that's, if that's what you want to call it a winter advisory for uh, snow calling anywhere from uh, what was it three to six inches as you can tell here, everything is covered, and as you can see there, the snow is coming down, and it's not showing any signs of stopping. This is a storm storm. Good afternoon, folks. You're here with reporter Jay Shave, and I'm on scene in the outer limits of Rio Grande, Ohio, where we are having a winter storm right now, folks. That's right, I said it, a winter storm. And now this storm, it had come from out west. Hello and good morning, southeastern Ohio. And I am reporter Jay Shea, you guys know me. And this is, uh, they're calling it the Winter Powerhouse. Now this is uh, probably the biggest storm so far of uh, the season. Actually the biggest storm of this year, if you want to get technical, now that it's 2010. And if you could tell, the snow... It's just blowing magnificently. <laughs> They're calling it the blizzard of the season. And I'm just getting covered here. And uh, I'm on the outskirts of Rio Grande, Ohio. And the snow shows no signs of stopping. I last looked at the radar. It was cleared back out in Cincinnati. Good afternoon and hello everybody. I am reporter Jay Shea. And I'm down here on the farm. You're probably wondering where I am. And as I say down here on the farm, I'm in Rye, O Grand, Ohio. And um, we're out here. It's Sunday afternoon. It's a nice fine day. The sun's shining down. It's beautiful. It's probably about 60 degrees outside. And as you can tell, I'm in farm country. That's right, folks. And the reason I'm here is because I've been 